My name is Ashish Pandey, and along with me, I have my friend. My name is Rajesh. Yep. So uh, today we are going to talk about how a dynamic table and snow pipe helping ally in real time data delivery innovation at our site. Yeah, so uh, we are going to talk about like who we are and we'll discuss about the different challenges we have with the real time data innovation. And we are going to talk about the dynamic table implementation we did at Ally, benefits of dynamic table, Snowpipe is streaming details, and also different monitoring and alerting we came up. And we'll share some of our insight, our learning experience when we use dynamic table and Snowpipe is streaming at our site. So who we are? The Ally is digital only, full service banking organization. It is the largest organization, digital only organization across the USA. And also one of the largest organization for auto, auto domain. We have 11,000 plus employees and also we are serving 11 million plus customers. We have, we have total actually experienced 100 plus years experience in this industry. And our core value is do it right. Do it right for our customers, do it right for our employees. And if you look at this commitment and our vision, the different recognition you can see here from different uh, magazines and different organization to ally. We'll talk about our data transformation journey. We have started our data transformation from last four, four years, and we chose Snowflake as one of our partner in this data transformation journey to support our data platform. The main reason is actually to unleash the data, our data and AI to drive real-time insights, build self-service models, and also provide deep and customer relationship. To achieve this vision in, at, at Ally's side, what we need actually, the single source of data, uh, data, and also have a platform which can actually provide uh, demand scalability. So like, you know, because we are having so much data coming in and also so many analysts going to use this platform, the scalability is very important for us. And also, we are in very regulated industry. Data security and data governance is very crucial for us throughout the, this data transformation journey. We also wanted to leverage AI and ML capability from this platform. So these are actually our vision to accomplish throughout this journey. And the way we did it actually, this is how we are actually accomplishing this one from last four years. So if you look at here, we got four major pillars. One is enterprise platform and tools, which is actually cloud native, secure, governed, and having integrated with model, uh, modern tools. So that's what Snowflake is providing. And once you have this base platform created, you have to work with, within your organization. Data transformation journey is just not limited to data engineers or data analytics team. We need to engage with the governance team, data stewards team, and also have a capability build up within your organization to support overall data transformation journey. And third pillar you could see that integration and consumption, having a modern BI build up, having excellence operational efficiency with data sharing, APIs and self-serve model to support integration and data consumption. So if you look at these three key pillars, these three key pillars actually leading towards the outcomes. We are at the fourth, fourth pillar now, which is actually providing business and customer insights, operational and cost efficiency, and data -driven, uh, our data-driven models have been built up using these pillars. So this is actually overall data transformation journey. We are going to talk about dynamic table and our snowpipe 
just to see how are we actually doing operational optimization to support this overall uh, journey. Just to give you some brief about how are we actually using Snowflake and how, is our, how much ecosystem we have built up in last four years. So just to give you a little glance, we have 200 plus application databases. We have 600 plus analyst databases built up. And if I just pull up the March 2024, 2024 data, we have 234 million SQL executed on, at our platform. It's a huge platform, lot of scalability opportunity, and our data transformation journey with Snowflake has been tremendous growth and tremendous opportunity coming forward. So now my uh, colleague Rajesh will talk about particular topic, the dynamic table and the snow pipe, how it is really helping in our data pipelining efficiency. Thanks, Ashish. So our objective is clear. We want to uh, improve the efficiency of our platform, and also we want to reduce the, the time taken to onboard the new data sources. So we thought like we improvise our data platform by using snow pipe streaming and dynamic tables. And uh, it enabled us to load the third party data as a new data sources faster to our data platform. Okay. Uh, this is how we implemented our dynamic tables in Ally. First is source, like our third party source is now able to ingest the, in seamlessly ingesting the data to the uh, Kafka publisher. And in ingestion, we have a Kafka publisher which publishes the data to multiple consumers. And initially, we developed Snowflake, uh, we implemented Snowflake Sync Connector Consumer. And by default, it came with the Snowpipe as a connection uh, uh, load up data method. Then we changed it to Snowpipe Streaming because the difference is the Snowpipe has a two step process. First, it ingests to the staging area, and then it loads into the uh, the actual target table. But Snowpipe streaming loads directly in just to the target table, which is help us to reduce the latency and cost efficiency. Third, third layer, raw layer, where we ingest the, all the published events into a designated table in a JSON format. And we build uh, uh, the dynamic tables on top of it. So in the curated layer, we explored both the uh, dynamic table as well as teams and tasks. And what the main obje uh, objective is to reduce the complexity. So with the dynamic table, it's a new type of table published by the Snowflake, uh, which will help us like, like just as like a select statement, or create table on top of a select statement, which will enable us to use joins, aggregate function, and all other uh, functions able to use it. And it's a very simple way to create a table. And we can have a, our own defined lag, like uh, it doesn't need to be like uh, always a real time. So we can have our own lag time. Uh, it, the least minimum is one second, uh, sorry, one minute. And if you, uh, you can also build a dynamic table on, offer, on top of another dynamic table. In that case, we can use a downstream as a dependencies. So it gives us the flexibility, like where we can have our, our own um, refresh window. We don't need to depend on like uh, on the real time ingestion. It will help us to have uh, cost optimization. And warehouse, like for a data movement, the dynamic table needs to utilize the warehouse. Um, so what we did, like in our ally, is like we used a specific warehouse only for dynamic tables to estimate the utilization. So it's a be as a best practice, we can do that. Like we have a specific warehouse only for the dynamic tables, and it help us to understand the uh, effectiveness of it. And uh, uh, dynamic tables have, gives a flexibility like where we can modify both target lag and the warehouse on later point of time, whenever we want it. Uh, yeah. And the uh, yeah. fifth is analytical layer. In the analytical layer, we build the user views on top of a uh, dynamic table, and we build uh, dashboards on top of the user views. So this is how we implemented the end-to-end uh, -end process. And this has really helped us to onboard the uh, data sources faster because uh, once this is done, like it, it, like it's the, it's a very a cakewalk for others to just follow the same process and be able to load the uh, other data sources quicker to the Snowflake. 
benefits of dynamic tables like as we seen like it just as a, is a c task like where we create a dynamic table on, on top of a select statement it helps to reduce the complexity so uh, we able to develop and deploy it faster to the production so uh, that reduces the complexity there like and even though we say a lot of benefits about the uh, dynamic tables there it has its own limitation also and they are captured uh, everything in the snowflake documentation a very detailed page and uh, uh, i'll really suggest to go over that page for any limitations and understanding for it user depend defined freshness as we discussed like target lag like what we did is like we keep on ingesting the data on real time but it's not cost effective to run uh, dynamic tables for every 60 seconds or or 5 minutes so what we did is like as per the requirement of the uh, uh, business we able to schedule our dynamic table freshness uh, for every 60 minute uh, sorry uh, every one hour so that help us to reduce the cost again so and since it it is part of the same dynamic table itself we don't need a separate orchestration so that is also help us to you know uh, save some time in development there and uh, in, in incremental uh, refreshes so even though the how big is a complex sql we use to create the dynamic tables it handles it and able to understand the only the incremental refreshes and load into the target table and even it has a intelligent uh, 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 understanding that like if there is no change in the sql it doesn't use any errors at all so again there is also cost savings there so uh, dynamic table like overall it helps us in delivering faster and with cost savings benefits of so, uh, snowpipe streaming so as we discussed like snowpipe streaming is it's a direct way to ingest the data compared to the snowpipe where it uses a uh, two step process where it loads for to the staging table first then to the target table uh, so compared to the snowpipe snowpipe streaming uh, streaming provides a low latency and it really improved an efficiency for us and uh, we able to uh, in our case like Fifty uh, thousand message uh, events uh, within a uh, five minutes, so that is really efficient and uh, uh, and it's very simple change. You don't need to do any sim uh, uh, complex coding for that. It's just a small uh, changing the uh, data method, so uh, it's really uh, easy to change it. And cost reduction uh, because as we uh, explained earlier, like Snowpipe uses the staging area where it keeps the data there. and loading the data from the staging area to the target designated table uh, it uses more cost and the uh, uh, for the storage as well as the memory so snowpipe streaming help us to reduce it also and load da data format like the snowpipe streaming writes the data as a uh, uh, as a row and it ingests the data as a row where uh, snowpipe ingests as a file to the table back to ashish for yep that. so uh, thanks for this so we discussed about different the way dynamic table being used and snowpipe and also the benefits of that but one important thing what we realized when we we are using dynamic table is snowflake is actually maintaining this monitoring using table called dynamic table refresh history and they maintain that dynamic table dependency among those tables using dynamic table graph history tables these tables are actually maintained at the database level but the challenge is here the refresh history when we initially we started building snowflake was only keeping the data for 24 hours it was very challenging for us because in our organization we have to keep minimum 3 months for any monitoring purposes so what we were we had we have our uh, enterprise observability tools so what we started doing actually we built up our own monitoring and alerting dashboard and we integrated that with this dynamic table so we were pulling this data out of snowflake feeding to our observability tool which was actually monitoring and alerting for any failure so these are the what i have learned recently i was going through a documentation yesterday i realized snowflake increased this time now they are supporting up to one i think 7 days so they may be like you know coming up with more uh, uh, availability of refresh history but we would suggest if you have to maintain that you keep the observability and alerting out of snowflake and use your own enterprise one so that's what the one of the lesson learned uh, we have you can go to next one yeah so one few consideration we have to do when you, we are using a dynamic table and one thing i must say that 
dynamic table is actually one of the most innovated pro data engineering product what Snowflake got recent in the recent history. It is very simple, very powerful feature, and the way they, they are maintaining the cost is being amazing. So we like a, the kind of product they launch is very simple to use. That's what Rajesh was talking about. But it doesn't mean that dynamic table is going to solve all of your data engineering problems. So you have to really evaluate your use case and make sure it is fitting in the boundary of dynamic table and that's where you can use it. Other thing is cost evaluation. If you look at the documentation, the, the documentation will talk about, and it's very clear, if there is a data at the source site and you have a refresh, and if there is a no data, they won't charge you. So even the refresh work, no data, they won't charge you. So that's how it works. So that's the best for any cloud solutioning. But what you need to consider when you are setting up dynamic table, you have to make sure it always go for incremental load. It doesn't go for the full load. So you have to make sure in that aspect because if somehow your dynamic table is going full load, there will be a cost for your warehouse. That's a one consideration you have to do. The third one and very important one, understanding the lagging. So Rajesh was talking about one, uh, one of the configuration where it says target lag. Target lag is very crucial to understand if you have your overall data pipelining build up with the multiple table involved. You need to understand when data is getting landed at source site and when you are promising to your business partners. Lagging has to be, those dependent lagging has to be defined that way. Otherwise you may have data lagging more and it can be cascaded effect throughout your data pipe, pipelining. So that's important to understand. And third one, like I was talking, the monitoring and alerting. You need to get this out of Snowflake, have your own monitoring in place if you are, your monitoring requirement, requirements are not matching what Snowflake is offering. So these are the crucial, uh, our lesson learned we have, but it's very powerful feature and in coming days, I was talking to our, my uh, Snowflake uh, partners. The adoption of dynamic table has been very aggressive throughout the Snowflake clients, and we could understand when we really started using it. Time to market has been very amazing for us, and uh, delivery, del delivery pipelining delivery has been tremendous. Uh, like you know, efficiency has been improved drastically. So that's all we have from our side. Yeah, thank, thank you. you, everyone. Thank you.